In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions. We are going to dive into the upcoming pattern as well as every single day. It's becoming more and more likely that we're going to see colder air moving into the eastern United States. And as we're taking a look here, currently we have plenty of cold air and storminess happening in the western United States there. And then it's much, much quieter here in the eastern United States, as you can see. Uh, there is a pocket in here that is dealing with very scattered and very mild showers. But outside of that, there is no major weather happening in the eastern half of the nation. And then obviously there is a lot of activity here in the western half of the nation. So let's just dive into it. There is a whole lot to break down here, obviously, in the west. And we can see that there is a low somewhere in here. We can see that this is literally rotating right here. And this is bringing some of the heavier precipitation with it. Uh, we can see there's a pocket that is onshore and offshore here with the heaviest of showers that I'm seeing from this entire storm, yellows and oranges popping up here. Um, it's not super widespread. We can see that it's a bit scattered about, but definitely bringing some heavier showers, especially to the Portland area and then southern coastal Washington there as well, seeing some of those heavier showers. And a lot of this is going to move onshore a little bit later on. We can see some snowfall and rainfall showers around for the Seattle and surrounding regions like the Olympic Mountains here uh, and some of the northern Cascades as well, seeing some snowfall up there. Uh, so definitely some different areas seeing some of this interesting weather. We see the Sierra Nevadas up through some of these hilly regions up there in northern California seeing some snowfall with this storm system as well. And then some of these higher elevation regions in Nevada seeing some snowfall showers also. Uh, now, as we break down the northern Rockies, we can see there's some more widespread snowfall taking place up here, northern Idaho, uh, and then some of these just northern Rockies in general, uh, Missoula, Great Falls areas, and probably some surrounding areas as well, seeing this mo moderate to heavy snowfall, the whites and blues especially being the heavier of the snowfall, so definitely pretty persistent snowfall coming down for these areas. As we move a bit further south, we can see kind of what I would call the middle Rockies, Utah in through Wyoming, uh, we can see that there is another pocket in here with plenty of snowfall taking place. And areas near Salt Lake City, the higher elevation areas obviously, are seeing extremely heavy snowfall actually. So especially those blue and white regions. And we'll actually zoom in here, but this is the heaviest snowfall that I can see at this point. Uh, definitely some heavier stuff coming down. Uh, especially in this pocket. I guess Salt Lake City, the actual downtown area has switched over to snowfall. Um, so that is a big population area, obviously seeing quite a bit of this snowfall. Uh, and we're seeing these whites and we're seeing the blues. The blues is, is like whiteout conditions usually. So I've made this color table for the radar myself. So I specifically put it at a certain point where I would know what that looks like outside my window. And I can tell you, areas in the blue, extremely heavy snowfall. So we are seeing a lot of heavy snowfall in those pockets. That's the best part about making your own radars. You can know exactly what each color means. We can see some showery activity from Southern California, like Los Angeles uh, and surrounding regions. And then up through kind of Southern Nevada, they're seeing some showers. And what's interesting is there's actually a low pressure system right over LA. Uh, definitely not a very common occurrence, not impossible, but definitely interesting to see. And I'll tell you this much, some showers rolled through in LA. Some of the rare LA snowfall has taken place, <laughs> not LA snowfall, rainfall, LA rainfall has taken place um, today. So very, very interesting overnight into today. Now looking at the overall picture, we can clearly see the jet stream is uh, very much so troughing in the West at this point. And this was to be expected. And we can see a lot of ridging happening here in the East. And what we're going to be paying attention to in the model run is going to be the opposite potential for this later on. So everybody in this next, you know, 15 days or so could get their fair share here of uh, precipitation. Now, as we can see, there is some lighter to moderate showers around for Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama as well, uh, and definitely lighter in most areas, but we can see that it looks more like isolated thunderstorms perhaps here in Georgia and South Carolina. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to focus primarily in on the upcoming pattern where we'll see if this pattern can completely flip to cold and snowy potentially in the east. Now we're kind of going to get our answer here as to what's going to happen on our simulated radar, but let's just move through with this quickly. 
Uh, and as you can see, by the time we're reaching later uh, tomorrow evening, uh, we will be seeing this snowfall diving down primarily here for the southern Rockies. So Arizona, um, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, and Wyoming seeing quite a bit of moderate to heavy snowfall in here. Definitely uh, very, very interesting there. Uh, we're seeing warmer weather primarily in the east. Um, so definitely still sticking with that over the next few days. As we reach Friday evening here, we can see more snowfall for the Rockies. So this is going to be the, the common trend in the upcoming pattern, a whole lot of snowfall for the Rockies. We can see a bit of a frontal boundary in here taking place, probably much warmer on this eastern side than it is here on this western side. And this could create some severe weather along that line here for Friday, November 4th. So keep that in mind. As we approach Saturday evening here, we could see snowfall for the Cascades and Northern Rockies. Not a huge surprise there, but what is a little bit more surprising is we have some snowfall happening for Minnesota, Wisconsin, and the UP of Michigan there. Very, very interesting. And a bit, again, a bit of a frontal boundary taking place here. Not a major cold front, but does have some precipitation with it. Uh, we can tell there's a cold front here. And then out ahead of that cold front, we do have precipitation and showers moving up ahead as probably a very strong southerly wind is moving through. That's Saturday into Sunday, uh, November 5th to 6th. Here's November 6th, Sunday afternoon. We do have some snowfall showers happening throughout the northwest. Again, not a huge surprise there. Monday the 7th here, still some snowfall out west. Really not much else to speak of. Tuesday the 8th, we get... A major storm system, 989 millibar low pressure center here, bringing some rainfall showers to the east and definitely wrapping around some snowfall to the west. Could be another major Rocky Mountain snowstorm here around that time frame, Tuesday, November 8th. Uh, and then as we reach Wednesday, November 9th, this is right around when we're expecting a potential switch in the pattern. Uh, we get this low moving up to the north, uh, and it wants to do kind of like this. Obviously, there's a cold front swinging underneath as there is with much of our low pressure systems that move through. And this is going to lead towards potentially some of that cold air being pulled into the east. So one thing to note is we do have some nor'easter activity happening uh, in the upcoming pattern. So within the next 10 days, we do expect a few coastal storms to be possible. Certainly something to pay attention to. Uh, a bit of a frontal boundary setting itself up here and we can tell there's a lot more cold air bottled up and it's kind of tilted to where it's including the east here uh, definitely worth noting there on friday the 11th and then here's the big kicker right first off take this with a grain of salt that that should be a given we're taking a look at beyond 10 days to so take it with a grain of salt especially when we're talking about specific details like snowfall on a certain day for a certain place details like that are going to be a little bit harder to predict than saying we might see a flip in the pattern that will bring the cold from the west to the east. That's a much bigger picture type pattern, and models can predict that kind of stuff even a month out. Uh, but it can't predict, you know, that there will be snowfall happening in Iowa on December, you know, 15th. That That is not something that models can do. So that's the big difference. A lot of people think that models just can't do anything uh, in the long range, but that's absolutely not true. It's just when you look at certain details, like it's going to be, you know, 32.5 degrees as the high temperature in you know Minnesota on December 9th no can't do that but to say that we might be dealing with cooler than what is normal uh, during that time frame would perhaps be a lot easier to predict so with that all being said we do see a snowstorm kind of move through and bring snowfall into these areas during this time frame and is it completely something that we need to throw away and say absolutely not going to happen I wouldn't go that far um, <clears throat> I would say that it's going to be better to say, oh, this model thinks there could be snowfall during this upcoming pattern for some areas here in the eastern United States. That's going to be a little bit easier to, for the model to be correct on than to pay attention to this specific track. I know it's hard to keep track of, but it is a lighter snowstorm that we see here, so there isn't going to be a whole lot of precipitation apparently, uh, but we do see some snowfall showers at least happening for Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, which isn't unheard of. We do see that quickly move through where we do see some snowfall showers for some of these areas pretty scattered. Um, again, not impossible, but certainly probably not the most likely thing in the world. We see this, this big Arctic blast, and it is just going to dive down into the eastern United States. Uh, and again, take it with a grain of salt, but we see another snowstorm here develop 
for Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And a lot of my Eastern people are going to get a little bit excited about this. Don't get overly excited. Uh, but what we see happen over the next couple of frames is very, very interesting. Uh, very unlikely to take place this way, I guess is how I would say it, with areas like Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma seeing snowfall in mid-November. I would say that's very, very unlikely. But a snowstorm of some sort as this trough moves in potentially wouldn't be you know, the most unlikely thing in the world. Again, it's not the exact details we need to pay attention to. It's just the fact that it is showing, you know, back-to-back -back more minor to moderate snowstorms rolling through uh, somewhere in the eastern half of the nation as this trough comes in. That's definitely a detail that we can take note of. And as you can tell, we are fully engaged in a positive PNA pattern by Monday the 14th here. And what I mean by positive PNA here is that we have a warm bubble taking place in the west. Uh, and this is forcing all of this cold air up in the Arctic regions to move down into the eastern half of the nation because like water and oil, these cold and air and warm air masses can't mix, just like water and oil cannot mix. So it moves around just like oil and water would do. I explained this yesterday, but what's interesting is I had a lot of people saying, what's PNA mean? Uh, so I, I think there's just a lot of people that click on the video, watch for a few minutes and then ask questions and don't finish the video. Um, but it is important for, you know, I usually try to explain everything. So if you watch the entire video, you should get a lot more answers that way. Uh, we see this snowstorm still rolling through, bringing pretty heavy snowfall here to some of the Appalachian Mountain areas. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. For those areas, this is where things get a little bit more surprising. Uh, more of the Mid-Atlantic seeing potentially some moderate to heavy snowfall for a time here, Monday to Tuesday, the 14th to 15th. But again, things like the specific date, the specific location, um, the specific uh, timing, the specific intensity, all of these specifics. If you have to put specific, the word specific in front of it, it's probably not something we should be paying attention to. Uh, so th there's that. Uh, but if we take it a, a more, more of a broad look at this and say, we've seen two snowstorms here in the upcoming pattern according to the GFS model. Again, that is something that I personally take note of and have seen models get correct in the long range. Not specifics, but more of the broad pattern type details. Now we see that move out. So something that can be noted is that the trough is a little bit more flat according to this model. And this is gonna allow for this to just quickly move through if anything of that nature happens. So these would be quicker hit type systems. And that's not more of a specific that is uh, something that the overall pattern would dictate. So that is going to be a little bit more of a detail that is worth noting. I wish I could tell you that there was going to be a major, uh, major, major, major snowstorm somewhere out here, but that is just not the case. Uh, with this type of a trough in the east, that is not the case. Um, we see things lift off, but we still have our positive PNA out here. So what this means is, yes, the troughs might lift off, but because we have this positive PNA out west, we continue to see more troughs be building into the east. Like we see this next one try to move in around Friday the 18th, bringing more snowfall to the northeast potentially. Again, we need to take note that there is more snow being indicated in the eastern United States as a broad detail uh, and multiple troughs in the upcoming pattern moving into the east. So it seems like we could get locked into a positive PNA pattern, which overall would mean more chance at cold, more chance at snow for the east. And that is something that you can put on uh, put in the back of your head that could be upcoming, uh, definitely a detail that these models could get right in the long range. So something that I'm paying attention to, it's not locked in solid yet. We're still a long way from that. But every single day that we continue to see this is a day that, you know, the percent chance in my mind goes up of this occurring. Now, total precipitation through the next 10, uh, more like 15 days on this model uh, is going to be Practically none in the white areas. Your grays will be a tenth of an inch or less. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues will be half an inch to an inch. Yellows an inch to two inches. Reds two to five inches. And then browns five to ten inches of precipitation. The most happening there in the northwest. Total snowfall, no surprise here. There is some very interesting looking areas in the east. But again, take it with a grain of salt. You can tell that these are quick moving, more minor snow systems that this model indicates. So in the long range, we cannot rule out that there could be some quick hit snow shower, snowstorm type things happening. But again, very minor dusting to maybe a couple of inches max. 
uh, and probably the further north you are, even further north than what this model is indicating, probably the more likely that is of happening. Areas like Arkansas, Tennessee, Virginia, Maryland, Delaware, those are the areas that I'm much less confident in something like this happening, even if this model is showing it. Again, the specific details aren't you know, that important, and my you know, climate knowledge is telling me that this is a little bit uh, outlandish. Now, anywhere in the grays, this model is indicating a dusting, if anything. Blue's 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purple, 6 to 10. Pink's 10 to 20. Uh, and then your pastel blues will be 20 to 30 inches of snowfall. So we see a lot of these kind of like pastel blues up here. Uh, but we can tell there's some pastel pinks in, in within those pastel blues. They're a different shade of pink than this. They're more of the areas within these higher mountain ranges. That's where we're seeing 30 to 48 inches plus to the highest amounts of snowfall here. That's going to be pretty exclusive for very high elevation areas. Now for the temperature pattern. <clears throat> Let's just take a look at this. This is a classic negative PNA. Let me get a let me get a frame here. So negative PNA means the western areas in North America are cold. And like water and oil, that forces this warm air to move around the area. Everywhere from the west, west is upstream, east is downstream. So it all starts from the west and moves eastward. So that's why, you know, warmer temperatures in the east isn't affecting isn't what's causing the cold in the west. It's the cold in the west that is causing the warm in the east because the east is downstream from the west. Uh, just like a rock downstream in a river doesn't affect how the water moves upstream. I hope that, or not, not you know, very far upstream at least. Uh, so I hope that makes sense. And then by the time we're reaching uh, into the about 11th, 12th, 13th time frame, this is when we see plenty of deep Arctic air but it begins to make its move eastward around this point. Um, so we see more of this being introduced into the east, possibly very intense cold air, by the way, according to this model. But again, specific details aren't as important. Uh, and over time, especially the further in you go, the more locked in we get into this positive PNA, where primarily we have warmer than normal conditions here. And we can tell the cold air is just streaming into the eastern United States, because again, I know this is just getting... Um, obviously a little bit annoying at this point, but this, just like water and oil, it, the cold air will not move to where this, this positive PNA is set up. It moves around it. What has to happen for a positive PNA to end, by the way, because you might be thinking, well, cold has to eventually go in your, well, it would be this positive PNA actually moving uh, away. It wouldn't be cold air moving in here and disrupting it. It would be this area completely just moving away, uh, if that makes sense. Anyway, that's it for this video. I know these videos have been getting a little bit more educational, a little bit longer and a little bit more confusing, but this is kind of a more crucial time uh, in the year, I guess, where we're seeing this warm pattern has set in in the east, and now it's looking to flip back, so there's just a whole lot to discuss at this point. That's why the videos have been a little bit longer, uh, definitely some more things that people are curious about. Be sure to subscribe. We do upload every single day, and we will get to the bottom of this. We will figure out if it's going to happen or not, so expect more discussions on this specific topic over the coming days and even weeks. Uh, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.